who's going to take the next big jump, right? That's the question. For me, it's very, very simple, and I'll tell you who it is. It's uh, the defensive line. I need the defensive line to step up this year, okay? Too many additions have been made to the defensive line to see the defensive line underperform. I have too much faith in a guy in Marion Hobby to get this defensive line corrected. So when I look at guys on the defensive line, guys like Miles Murphy, guys like Sam Hubbard, guys like, uh, what's his name? Sheldon Rankins, BJ Hill, the list goes on. I'm not going to say too much about rookies just yet because I'm not looking at the rookies. Veterans, I'm looking at you. I need the defensive line to step up as a whole because guess what? The goal should be for the Bengals to make sure they're doing enough on the defensive line, getting pressure at the quarterback, stopping the run. You want to maximize the reps that you can get out of some of these guys, right? You want to make sure that guys like Trey Hendrickson are getting the proper breather on the, on the side. You don't want to you don't want to have this guy coming off four or five times out of a game holding on to his ribs because he got hurt and this guy's just it's getting a long year. absolutely ragdoll. It's a long year with another added game. And guess what, guys? They're talking about <laughs> adding uh, adding another game at uh, at some point in the next couple of years. The name of the game for the – I hate to even say what I'm about to say. The NFL, the Bengals specifically, you guys need to operate in – you know, maybe adopt one of your own – what's it called? Load management, but not missing games and more so missing missing drives essentially to where you can take some reps off for a guy like uh, Trey Hendrickson. So there is a guy that specifically I'm looking at that I'm expecting to step up this year. My guy, BLXS. He beat said it in the comment section. Joseph Asai. Joseph Asai. This is for you. This is your opportunity to step up to show the National Football League that hey, even though I was picked in the third round with a high draft pick, and I, I may not have shown everything that I'm capable of. Maybe this is the year you step up. Maybe this is the year that Joseph Asai takes that leap. Maybe it is, right? So. One thing I'm looking for is I'm trying to see who's going to take Take that leap from the edge standpoint. We need more juice on the defensive line, but specifically the edge rushers. I think the Bengals did a very good job on the defensive tackle room, Mm -hmm. the interior of the defensive line, but I need to see more out of these edges. Our pass rush should not become non-existent when a guy like Trey Hendrickson's off the field. Can we all agree to that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So with that being said, Bengals, you know, the defensive line has been an Achilles heel. Yes, it was last year. You wanted to recreate the magic that you had the year you went to the Super Bowl. You did your best to try to incorporate that. Okay, what now? What now? Evan, what are your thoughts? Uh, Man, I'm looking right at you. Uh, Same thing you said, where it's it's Miles Murphy, in my opinion. That's that's the next guy who's going to take this jump, and I I think he already started to do that. Um, I I know people were uh, less than enthused with the numbers last year, and I don't think that's any fault of his own. Mm -hmm. I think we talked about when he was selected that he was going to be a project that needed to be molded a little bit, that needed to develop a pass rush moveset that had all the physical abilities to become a great pass rusher. Um, And and the first seven weeks, he did not play much. Um, 54.9 PFF grade was 100th out of 123 defenders uh, on the edge. 58.5 PFF pass rush grade was 88th, and he had a 9.1 pass rush win rate. Um, but then week eight onward, we remember there were a lot of articles talking about how he had really dedicated himself well, was coming along, and then he was rewarded with more snaps out of the bye, and he did improve where – He ended up with a 65.9 pass rush grade, which was 58th, almost a 30 spot increase and a 13.6 pass rush win rate, which was 36th out of 123 defenders. So he got into that kind of top tier of of edge rushers in terms of win rate um, in the top quartile. So that was much better for him in that he was winning a lot of his pass rush, uh, his pass rush snaps and that pass rush grade, though, not highly impressive at 65.9 would be a career best for Sam Hubbard. And again, I know we love Sam Hubbard. He's an excellent run defender, but this is going to be the time that he is going to probably need to supplement a lot of these Sam Hubbard snaps and take over because look, I I know Sam Hubbard was dealing with a uh, 
with a, a leg injury last year and that he was playing through it. But this is career wise, right? With Sam Hubbard, that these, these marks, these pass rush win rate marks, these pass rush grade marks that miles Murphy is hitting um, would be career marks for a guy like Sam Hubbard as a pass rusher. And we, you said it yourself, the pass rush needs more juice. This is a, a, a league where passing the ball is becoming more and more important every single year. Um, obviously to beat, the Chiefs to beat the Bills, you're going to be able to have to stop the pass. So um, getting Miles Murphy a lot more reps, um, I think him taking a big step forward, I think that he absolutely can do that this year, both in terms of his role for the defense as well as the production as well. I agree. Logan, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, Evan just kind of talked about how the league is so pass heavy and, you know, you got to counter all these great athletes just in general on the offensive side of the ball. And I'm going to continue the theme of a defensive player here, but I'm going to go DJ Turner. I, I think that, you know, in general, the secondary really struggled last year, but I think a lot of that was, there was a lot of turnover. There's a lot of new faces, but there's also the poor defensive line play. Mm -hmm. It was just a lot going on. But at the end of the day, you know, DJ Turner only had a 48.4 coverage grade last season. You just like, that's, that's bad. That's just, that's just not good. And when you're such a good, just humanly gifted athlete like dj turner is a sub four three speed you got to be able to at least cover and you know it's not like he just can't do it he did it all in college and he was very good at it mm -hmm. you know so it's just we need to see more from him the athletic ability is there just the flashes are there he's came in and started off really well and then kind of just as he got more and more runs struggled and struggled maybe it's just kind of finding his strength you know playing him to his strengths or zone coverage maybe moving him around more whatever it is but he's just such a unique athlete he's such a gifted athlete and when you have that those things that you can't really coach you got to find ways to translate that onto the field and i think hopefully with the improved defensive line he can kind of tune into some of that more athletic yeah. ability he can sit there and just be like i know i don't have to cover for five seconds anymore i can just do what i can do in two and a half seconds and then i can make a play on the ball you know he can play with more confidence because yeah. he knows the line's going to get there he's just he's too good of an athlete and he's too good of a player to kind of struggle the way he did down the stretch last year but um again we didn't really add anybody in the cornerback room to really come in and kind of threaten his job we did though right away we I, did, though. I, he's he's gonna start no 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 no. we did though we we did but but i, mean, I don't mm. mean i don't mean any draft picks yeah i, I mean, don't Dax. mean i'm talking about Dax Hill. yeah 